Welcome to the church of Peter and Paul here in the little Westerwald village of Weidenhahn. I don't know how you would translate Weidenhahn, but never mind, here we are. And um, I thought I'd show you the interior of the church because it's rather interesting. First of all, buried in the altar that you just saw there, there is sort of, um, sort of relics of St. Paul that in the altar there, so uh, it's a rather important church. But uh, Archit architecturally, is that a word? Architecturally, it's also a very interesting church. These great pillars in the middle of the church, they sort of separate these two naves, as it were. It's not one central nave of the church. There are sort of two separate wings, as it were. And it makes for a very interesting acoustic, but it also makes for a rather interesting symmetrical problem when it comes to installing things like organs. You can't put an organ in the middle at the back because there is no middle. There are these great pillars in the middle. So the organ builders, when they installed the organ back in the 70s, they chose that side to install the organ. It's an organ by a German organ builder called Oberlinger. And you may recognize the name because the organ we feature occasionally from Bonn in St. Joseph in Bonn, that's also an Oberlinger organ. This one is slightly smaller and slightly less French. And that's what we're gonna have a look at today. Upstairs at the organ, here it is. Um, two manuals and pedal. There's no swell division, there's no swell pedal. It's a Brustwerk and a Hauptwerk, and of course the pedal. And the whole thing is sort of, it's 1970s Germany we're talking about here, so it's one of these neo-baroque style organs. So it's sort of very, very highly voiced, sharp sounding mixtures, as it were. And um, none of this sort of big fat romantic sound, although there have been changes to the organ over the years and uh, it does have a slightly more sort of romantic sound these days, but we'll get to that in a minute. It's got 19 stops. Now, I think in the introduction I said it's got around 20 stops, so it's actually less than I thought. 19 stops, but it's got everything you need and the sound, it's actually rather nice. It fills the church rather nicely. <laughs> And of course we have that lovely acoustic on top, a nice little sound. Let's have a closer look at the stops. Let's start then with a quick look at the Brustwerk. Of course we have an eight foot flute. Of course we have an eight foot flute. Every organ starts with an eight foot flute and this one is no exception. Here it is. A long time ago, there was a different stop here. You can tell by the sort of, look at the sort of the shininess of the stops. They're rather matte and this one is rather shiny. This solitional, this used to be a Krummhorn. And um, I had a chat recently with the organist here. It's a colleague and friend of mine, Mr. Bernd Kexel. And Bernd told me that the Krummhorn that was in the organ was so horrible and so unusable, even when it was tuned. It was so unusable, they got it changed, so it became a solitional, that's a sort of a stringy stop. And that now means, of course, we have, if we have the two eight foots together, the gedacht flute and the solitional together, we have that sort of slightly, slightly more romantic warm sound. And something that's rather interesting, it should be mentioned here, uh, sort of moving on towards our improvisation stuff for today. When you've got a combination of stops, or even just one stop, I'll show you this in a minute with some other stops, uh, don't forget that they sound different in different registers, as it were. So here in the middle, where you would sort of normally play, these two together sound rather warm and nice like this. Up here, it sounds completely different. And of course, right down at the bottom, they sound even more. Mm. 
there's always something to think about when you're improvising and when you're changing registrations. Maybe the sound you're looking for is a certain stop in a different register. For example, our next flute here in the Brustweg is a four foot flute. It's called a Koppelflöte, and it's a rather chiffy little number. Which is rather cute. Up here, of course, it sounds very chiffy. And down in the bottom end. Much smoother. So we have our eight and four foot flutes together. Once the flutes are over, you get a two-foot principle. Now, it's a bit on the heavy side, and that's just the way they built the organs in those days. So it doesn't have a nice big eight-foot principle sound that you can build a principal chorus on. It's just a principal two-foot, and that sort of lightens everything up. Sort of missing a bit of bottom end there. We then have a one-foot sifflute. One foot, that's sort of very high. Let's say, here's my eight-foot flute. There's eight, four, two, one. That's rather a lot of uh, octaves together. It's a very high sound, so here's eight, four, two, and one together. Very, very, very bright sound. There's a cymbal mixture that's a four rank mixture, and that's of course way, way, way brighter even than the one foot, and that sort of gives it this sort of neo baroque sound. You can play around with these stops in different combinations to get some rather nice effects. And I particularly like the eight and one effect. So we have our eight foot flute and our one foot flute together. So it's four octaves in between. Very cute, isn't it? Down at the bottom. A rather hollow sound. And then of course up at the top, very, very bright. a little music box. If you then have the four and one, so that's sort of uh, not this far apart, only two octaves apart this time, so this one. Different effects there. It's not bad, is it? Just a few little fluty stops. Down into the Hauptwerk, we of course have an eight foot flute, a Rohr flöte. There is, of course, a four foot flute that goes along with it. It's a very sort of. Listen, see if you can make up your own mind. It's got an almost sort of metallic sound to it. It's a, a rather like Oberlinger flutes. They're, they're really rather good at making flutes. Those two together have a lovely little sound. Rather cute, isn't it? Principal eight foot has to be here, so here it is. Nice big sound. The two eight foots together make it a little bigger. So you can 
can sort of build a romantic sound here out of this organ. We have our principal chorus, of course, that's the eight, four, and two principles. <laughs> and a surprisingly large mixture for this type of organ. It's a five-rank mixture, which is incredibly, incredibly sort of overdoing it, I think, for an organ of this size, but has, a, of course, a very nice bright sound. <laughs> finish it off we of course have an eight foot trumpet on top and this is not the brashest and brightest trumpet it's sort of a slightly rounder trumpet nonetheless with that mixture together gives it a lovely big sound <laughs> actually on its own the trumpet would be a rather nice solo stop a rather nice trumpet it's not overdoing it very nice little solo number so that was the Hauptwerk something that's interesting here is this little sort of combination of uh, of technical stuff on this side it's all electric so all the stop action and even this coupler stop it's electric but the coupler itself is still manual so if I put the coupler on coupler in other words joining the manuals together you can actually see the top manual sort of move into position. Watch this. Yeah, boom. You can really hear it. Um, so sort of, there's a mechanical thing that is sort of, boom, gets stuck between them, as it were. So when I play the bottom manual, it pulls the top manual with it. Yeah. What that does, of course, mean is I now have double the weight in the keys. So without it and with it, I'm basically pulling both keys at the same time, so it's much heavier to play. It's not overly heavy, but it's heavier. For example, if I have all the eight-foot stops here together, we have a nice big sound, but it's a big, big effort to play as well. Down into the pedal division then, and then we're finished with the stops. We have a 16-foot super, so it's a stopped bass, but it's still loud enough to fill the church and even gets things rattling. Listen to this. There are two 8-foot stops. There's an open 8-foot, so like a principal 8-foot, and a stopped. So here's the 16 and two 8s together. Not bad. There's a strange addition of a four-foot gems horn, which um, can be used as a solo stop, really. It's actually one of the loveliest stops on the organ. Very strange that it should be down in the pedal, but it could be used as a nice little solo number. And then, of course, you have a 16-foot reed stop, and it's not a huge, big sort of trombone or a posauna or something like that. It's a fagot, so like a bassoon, and it's got a nice sort of 16-foot sound, but a nice round sound. It's not overpowering. <laughs> bad, eh? So we're going to move back to our little improvisation series. And I want to start with, of course, a word of thanks as usual. Um, thank you for commenting and thank you for supporting. Don't forget down below there are the links to our PayPal, Patreon and Steady possibilities if you want to support the channel. And keep commenting, please. I didn't have much of a chance to answer last week's comments or even reply to some of them. Reply and answer, that's the same thing. Um, or like, you know, I can put my little sort of, I can I put my little hearty things there. Anyway, uh, last week was a rather busy week and I'll, I'll do my best to get most of them or as many of them as possible answered this coming week. Promise. Um, something that was rather interesting, a few people sort of did comment and commented on my, my, my harmonic tuition. 
and I, I apparently made some mistakes. Well, I didn't actually make any mistakes. I'm just trying to sort of describe everything as simply as I can so that everybody understands it. Now, I know, I know because I'm one myself, I know there are some sort of organ freaks and organ nerds out there watching the channel, and that's fine because the world is full of those people. Like I say, I'm one of them as well. But please don't forget there are also normal people out there watching the channel and I want them to understand what we're talking about as well. So please don't be offended if I don't use the correct terms to describe certain things. One person really got on his high horse last week when I was describing triads. You know, you've got a, 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 a one, a three and a five and then the various different positions you can play them in. And someone got on his high horse and commented with lots of capital letters. There's lots of shouting going on in his comment at this. Well, you know, that's fine, but, you know, I want everybody to understand what we're doing here. So uh, if, uh, if I don't get everything 100% right for that one person, then I'm sorry. But uh, like I say, I want everyone to understand what's going on. So what are we, why are we talking about improvisation again? Well, it's a very important subject, like I mentioned last time. And Every organ, as you know, is different. Every organ sounds different. Every organ has different stops. Every organ feels different to play, and so on and so on and so on. So you have to be able to adapt your style every time you sit at a different organ. And uh, that's something we definitely need to consider. OK, so into the world of improvisation once again. And today we're going to look at, we're not going to look at anything technical, really. We're just going to look at sort of ideas, where you get your ideas from. And as I said before, when you're looking at a new organ, you go through some of the stops, listen to how they speak, listen to how they sound, and sort of you can work around that. For example, our four foot flute up in the Brustwerk, again, it's quite chiffy, remember? Which means you can sort of play like that, all very sort of percussive. Or, if you play very slowly, in other words, you don't let the pipe speak really fast. You've got a very different effect, and that's only from one stop. So, what about combinations of stops? I already showed you the combination of eight foot stops, we'll come back to that in a minute. But maybe there are some other sort of solo-y things that you don't have. Uh, one stop I didn't show before was this thing called the sesqui alter that gives you a sort of clarinetti effect. And it's also very chiffy. Now that would be perfect for something like, you all know from Bach, I'm sure you've all heard that before. So you could sort of improvise something in that style using that combination. Yeah? And why not add a solo to that, like the original? You know how it goes? don't have it in my mind so it's, you know you know there's that wachet auf melody that comes in the left hand there yeah so why not do something like that with that sound there basically just mucking around. It didn't really work the way I wanted it to because I haven't prepared this, but that's the whole point, yeah? You sort of play around a bit until you find something that works for you. And that, on this organ, sounds perfect. So, what else can we do? I've already showed you our eight foot sounds. So if you are a fan, for example, of, like I am, sort of romantic French, French romantic organ music or English organ music and things, you've got these big sort of fat sounds. that sort of sound you can sort of waffle around harmonies like that all day add a bit of pedal and it becomes even fatter What am I 
doing there? How can I get these sounds? Well, all I'm doing is I'm sort of playing around the circle of fifths. It goes that way, doesn't it? Um, playing around the circle of fifths. Do you know what the circle of fifths is? We're not talking the circle of life. We're talking the circle of fifths. And it's sort of just a harmonic progression that takes you through different keys to different places. For example... And that's something I will explain in a future video, of course. But yeah, if you're playing that kind of music, then that kind of harmony always is always going to sound good. Why not? So let's move out of that. Everybody's favorite when they're mucking around an organ is, of course, the tutti sound. So you've got everything, basically. And um, something that really works well, you all know it from various toccata-style pieces. You've got toccata by Vidor with a pedal. <laughs> have it in there as well. You've got that thing from Vienne, his first organ symphony ends with. Yeah, it's that very bright sounding toccata you thing, where the hands are sort of just doing chordy stuff and then the melody underneath. Why not? Or the famous Boelmann toccata, which sounds like cinema organ music. seems to play it sort of really ta-da, ta-da, really short. It isn't written like that. It's actually written as a 16th note, but people forget that. And like I say, that sounds like cinema organ music, so why don't you get a picture in your mind of an old black and white film, the damsel strapped to the uh, train tracks, the train coming at high speed from behind, and the hero has to come in and rescue her. Well, here's the train. <laughs> go on like that for days. It's just playing around with chords and we're using an interval there called the tritone or here. That's all I was doing. I had just had a scale or then here and chords that sort of fit around that. That's all I was doing, a sort of tremolo thing. And already it sounds like a French toccata. So just simply by sort of listening to pieces you already know or you've heard before, doing a little bit of research, and then sort of copying that style, that's how you learn to improvise in different styles. I think that's enough for today. We've introduced a new organ. I've got you thinking about new improvisation styles. This and more shall be continued in our next video. Thanks for watching. Here's a piece of music. See you next time. Mm -hmm.